Oh, hi there, Team Aaron. We are back to Pokemon White. This would be episode 130. Huzzah! 30 additional episodes for what normal people usually do in the 60 episodes, which is really odd. I don't know, like, maybe it's just my ranting. Maybe that's why these episodes are so long. And yay! This is literally my favorite background for the Elite Four, because, like, I don't know, it reminds me of RC. Because, like, if you take away the tower in the center and the curtains in the back, this would be outer space, so that's cool. I really don't see what outer space has to do with psychic type I want, because most of them, although there are a few that are from space, are usually using inner mental power, which I guess you associate with space, because you would assume there's life forms out there with higher mental capacity and power than us, but that doesn't matter. I would just. Wait, did she even talk? She just came out of her bed. I'm like, hi there. And she's like, hi there. And. Battle stuff? No? no? Okay. Uh, we should probably heal up our team right here, because we do take a casual casualty like every Elite Four member, so that kind of blows. Oh no, I'm probably going to lose the Nuzlocke, now that I think about it. The Elite Four, probably going to ruin me. Probably going to wreck me, probably going to destroy my team. Not cool. Um, the Revives are probably at the top of the list, so let's heal up our team. I, I should heal our teams. There we go. Awesome sauce. So, uh, psychic type Pokemon. Basically, my best strategy would be Clyde with its Shadow Ball. Uh, Crook Odile with. Uh, yeah, these three right here Crook Odile, Zapat, and Clyde. They're pretty much going to beat the ever living crap out of those psychic types, unfortunately for my opponent. Uh, let's see here. Full of Restore. There they are. Actually, I should use Moomoo Mill because I don't really have a status. So, yeah, it'd be a total waste not to use it. So. Silithia getting them heals, though I probably won't be using Silithia, it's always a good backup to have a dragon type. Dragon types have like the most resistance, natural resistances next to steel types I believe. I think steel types resist a lot more, in which case a steel dragon would resist a lot, so Dialga resists a lot. Though a steel dragon with levitate, that'd be even awesomer, because you know, fire isn't super effective and it'd be, it, never mind. It wouldn't actually resist a lot, like... A Pokemon that would have, like, literally no weakness, I believe, they've already got one. It's a dark ghost type. Next best thing would be dark, I mean, not dark, but, um, a ghost steel type, I believe, with levitate. That would be very powerful. Now that I think about it, I don't think there's going to be one of those for a while, because steel represents technology, and ghosts usually represent not technology. Anyways, let's just uh, go on to this battle. Who's there? Who is, um, so in Koth has to disturb my sleep? Hmm, it's you again. Still, you possess the combination of kindness and strength, yet you seem stronger than before. Do you, uh, what? Uh, do be sure not to bore me with your snooze-inducing ba- What? Dude, I beat you last time. How is my battle snooze inducing? Like, seriously, that, there's that thumbnail again. <laughs> That's so funny. Not really. Alrighty, so the six on six battle with Caitlyn or Catlin or Kaitlyn. I'm not. I think it's Caitlyn. I'm pretty sure it's Caitlyn, but whatever. Clyde is. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm at Musharna. I keep. Whenever I see a Musharna, I think of Clyde. So, meh. It's like, I don't know. Whenever you see a puppy, you think of your dog. Is that like a natural thing? And it was. Uh, I'm gonna go for a crunch because I'm pretty sure it's not faster than me, but it is rather bulky. So there's a very good chance it'll survive this without too much damage. <gasps> yeah, it survived. Hypnosis. It's not gonna really hit because it has like 60 um, accuracy. Alrighty. So basically, if you do have um, a crocodile with Moxie, you won't really have trouble in this battle. Once you get your first KO, you should outspeed most of what's on her team, except for Alakazam. And I'm not entirely sure if he does have an Alakazam. But I'm 99.99% sure she has an Alakazam. <laughs> because why wouldn't you have an Alakazam? Because Alakazam is like the badass motherfucker of psychic type Pokemon. Like, not going into the legendaries, he is literally the strongest psychic type I can think of. In terms of, you know, raw, sheer, special power. Like, you know the devil's horn when you put up when you're like, um, I don't know, rock people who listen to rock know this. Like, the devil's horn, like, you know, your pinky and your pointer finger along with your thumb. They go up and every other finger goes down. That's what I think of when I think of Alakazam. And somehow that relation makes Alakazam seem very powerful. I'm not sure how. Maybe it's his pointy head. Uh, Reuniclus is a bulky Pokemon, but with plus one on my side and stab on Crunch, I shouldn't really have too much trouble taking it out. Plus, it's super effective. The only downside is I only have ten of Crunch, so yeah, I should have used those PP ups. I'm not even sure if I sold them or not. I probably should have sold them or used them. They're just sitting in my uh, bag right now, entirely useless. Alrighty, so we've pretty much got this battle in the bag. I think we're just going to go take out Marshall after this. Siglyph is a flying psychic type Pokemon. Very bulky if you let it set up. Not too bulky otherwise. Its natural bulk is somewhat threatening, 
but it's not that big of a deal as long as you take it out before it sets up. Once it sets up, of course, you are fucked. Simple as that. Unless you have, like, I don't know, Dark-type Arceus on your side or something like that, or maybe you pull off a Miracle Win. Miracle Whip! Almost as good as a Miracle Win! Haha, <laughs> I don't even know what the hell Miracle Whip is, I'm just assuming it's a product, because obviously, Miracle is a good word, Whip is something you use for cream, so I would assume it's something. Metagross! Holy crap, that is a very powerful Pokemon. A uh, problem when facing Metagross? Well, there's a lot of those. But the best thing to go with, I mean, you know, Crunch, you would think it would work, but it's a Steel-type, so it's not super effective, it's neutrally effective. Same thing goes for Bug-type attacks, neutrally effective, so Earthquake is our best bet. Oh no, oh no, 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 that's, that's not good. Uh, that was a Bullet Punch, which is basically a quick attack for Metagross, it's also a physical attack, so it's basically the variant, the physical, uh, not the physical variant, because it is a physical attack itself, so it's just a quick attack. But for steel types. And yeah, we've pretty much got this battle in the bag. Uh, I kind of feel bad, but I kind of don't. So we got plus three or four right now. So Crunch, although it's not going to be super effective, it's going to be a better bet than Earthquake because that thing probably has Levitate, in which case Earthquake's not going to hit it. And I'm not even sure why you would run the burn. Um, uh, what was it? A hard to burn or something? I don't know the ability for. It handles the power of burning attacks, and I'm thinking, that's not even like, I mean, not burning attacks, fire attacks. I'm thinking, that's not that good, because Levitate itself isn't entirely, like, it It voids the attacks of ground. So it's entirely an immunity to ground, which you're normally super weak to. So it's either you're entirely immune to something, or you take half damage, which is still neutral damage from something. And you will still take damage from the other thing as well. So it's either you lose a weakness, or you still keep both weak... Eh, Eh, never mind. Gothitelli, which is, or Gothit, yeah, I think it's Gothitelli, which I'm not sure how to pronounce. Psychic type Pokemon, pure psychic, by the way. It's a lot like Gardevoir, but its stats are a tiny bit different, and I don't believe its move pool is as large. Also, it's a native of this generation, so that apparently matters now. But you know, the native Pokemon, like Pokemon that are native to a certain land, don't really matter once you've beaten the game, because once you've beaten the game, I guarantee you, you'll, you know get into trading if possible. If it's not possible for you to trade, then you probably won't get into it, but if it's possible, and you don't already have the Pokemon, you're most likely going to trade to get it. Or if, you know, you're a hacker, or you're a cheater, or whatever, you're going to cheat, or whatever, to get the Pokemon, so, meh. <sighs> that was a long rant on who knows what, I don't even know. Uh, Kaelin's a rather easy battle if you have a lot of things that are effective against psychic type Pokemon, as with most, most trainers, where if you have something effective against them, they're not that hard to battle. Yeah. So, question of the day would be, what's your, um, what's the most difficult stra strategy video game that you've had, like, played? And I'm saying video game, because I don't really give two hoots and a cracker, I don't even know what that saying is, about not video game games. Like, I get that, you know, soccer, all that stuff is a game, but for the most part, just imagine it, if you had a godly body... Oh, then again, that applies to everything. If you have the god stats of whatever, if you're god moding, you're pretty much going to win whatever it is. Alright, so I don't really think... Yes, there is some strategy in sports, but I don't think there's as much strategy in sports as there is in video games. Because in video games, there's less variables and more strategy, whereas in real life, you have to consider every single variable. The wind, everything. Like, sure, if you have a super genius on your side as your coach for football... Yeah, that's awesome. Like, you know what? They should make a movie about that. They should have a movie, and maybe there is, but I haven't seen it. They should make a movie of, like, a super genius, like, a freaking genius beyond genius, just, you know, controlling the plays for football. That'd be... I might actually go and see that, if it ever exists, or if it doesn't exist. It probably doesn't exist. Anyways, let's go to the top of the list and revive our Pokemon right here, so we can be ready for the battle, which... Actually, we're at nine minutes, so... Crap, I guess, yeah, this is enough for today. So question today, what is the most strategic video game you guys have ever played? Because, uh, for me, most strategic video game I've ever played, it's either a tie between Yu-Gi-Oh! The Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise is very strategic, or Shin Megami Tensei, which is, like, Shin Megami Tensei actually, like, it, it's got this thing that leveling up a lot, it's not really going to save you. More like using different, ver like you literally have to use a variety of these sort of things, demons of sorts, 
to win the battles. You have to use, you're forced to use a variety of them. We're, not even Yu-Gi-Oh does that. Yu-Gi-Oh is you can just use the same unstoppable deck until they ban it. Yes, they do ban very powerful cards because it would be very cheap to play against the same old thing over and over again. So to keep things new, they ban old things. Anyways, that all wraps it up for today. Remember to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you already haven't. Bye!